To make a primary impression for an indentious patient using the impression compound, you're going to use metal trays, impression compound cakes, rubber ball, and some Vaseline. Place 8x8 eight eight gauze inside the rubber ball to prevent the material from sticking to the inner walls of the ball. Before starting the impression making procedure, you need to select the appropriate size that best suits your patient. So here we have size lower, L, number 4, and L5, L4 lower and 5 for the size of the tray. So now we're going to take it to the patient's mouth to decide for what size is appropriate for our patient. Seat the patient in the dental chair at a height that's best comfortable for you. So patient should be at the level of your elbow. Stand in front of the patient with your forefinger on the top of the tray and your thumb beneath it. Center the tray over the anterior residual ridge and seat the tray. Ask the patient to protrude their tongue. Protruding the tongue will raise the lateral borders from the lingual flanges of the tray. There should be 6 mm between the residual ridge and the flange of the tray. To select the appropriate upper tray, stand behind the patient. Now with one hand, retract the cheek using the mirror, and with the other, retract the cheek using the tray. Rotate the tray into place, and place it as the distal end of the tray as posteriorly as possible, uh, distal to the maxillary tuberosities. Now rotate the tray anteriorly, until it's seated over the anterior area of the ridge. There should be about 6 mm space between the residual ridge and the tray, and the tray should cover the whole edentulous area. Note the difference when a smaller tray is used. The area is not covered properly, and the tray is short from the depth of the sulcus, so when in doubt, always select a larger tray. So for this patient, we selected size 5 for the lower and size 5 for the upper. The material of choice for this procedure is impression compound, also known as modeling plastic. It's a thermoplastic material that is supplied in a form of cakes, which we'll be using right now as the one that you see here, or sticks, which are green sticks, that we'll be using later in the secondary impression procedure. The setting mechanism of compound is a reversible physical process. The thermoplastic nature of the material requires it to be preheated to be used warm at 55 Celsius and then cooled at interoral temperature at 37 Celsius, at which is fairly rigid. Heat water to 55 Celsius using a kettle or a heat controlled water bath. Now for the lower impression, you're going to use one to one and a half impression compound cakes. Softening of the compound in a warm bath should be carried out at a proper temperature to slowly convert it to a totally plastic state. The material should be uniformly soft as you place it inside the tray. Now avoid prolonged immersion or overheating because this can result in low molecular weight ingredients leaching out from the compound leading to increased brittleness or a grainy mass. Knead the material between your fingertips until it's completely softened to a plastic state. If you feel that it is sticking to your gloves, you may use Vaseline as it will aid in the process and give you a smoother surface. And remember that the material has a very low thermal conductivity, so therefore, adequate time should be allowed to attain thorough heating of the material. Once the material is completely softened, roll it 
between your palms and slowly start loading the tray. Load the tray from one end to the other gently to avoid incorporating air bubbles or creasing of the impression surface. Make indents on the surface of the impression to accommodate the shape of the arch, making sure that all excess material is directed towards the lingual surface. Reheat the material one last time before introducing it to the patient's mouth. Standing in front of the patient, introduce the impression compound containing tray into the patient's mouth. Gently, with your non-dominant hand, use a mirror to retract the cheeks, and with the end of the tray itself, use it to retract the cheek to the other side. Center the tray over the center of the ridge, and gently retract the lip to make sure that the material has reached the full depth of the sulcus. And gently order mold the peripheries or the, the full depth of the sulcus by stretching the tissues or the cheeks and the lips around the edges of the tray. Ask the patient to protrude their tongue and to move it right to left and swallow as this will border mold the lingual area of the sulcus. Repeat the steps one more time while the material is still soft and hold it in place until it reaches mouth temperature. You may use a saliva ejector while you're waiting for the material to set, as there will, as there will be. <laughs> you may use a saliva ejector while waiting for the material to set, as there will be pooling of saliva in the floor of the mouth. Remember to allow adequate time to attain thorough cooling of the material as stress-induced distortion of the set impression occurs if the material was not completely cooled before removal from the mouth because the inner portion of the impression will stay soft when the impression is removed. Note that the outer surface of the impression is now fully rigid. To remove the impression, gently break the seal around the impression and remove it from the patient's mouth. Dry the impression and inspect it under a good light source to make sure that you've recorded all anatomic landmarks. Look for the full depth of the labial and the buccal sulci and frena, buccal shelf area, retromolar pad, lingual sulcus, and lingual frena. To make the upper impression, follow the same procedures for manipulating the impression compound material. Once the material is completely softened, Shape it into a bowl between your fingers this way and then load the tray starting from the center, pushing the material into the edges. Make sure that all excess material is on the labial side so that you don't induce gag reflex while you're making the impression. With your index finger, push the material to shape the shape of the ridge or to make the shape of the ridge. Reheat the material 
until you're satisfied with the final shape. Use a small amount of Vaseline at your fingertips to create a smooth surface and to remove all creases from the impression surface. Reheat the material one last time before introducing it to the patient's mouth. Stand behind the patient. Use a mirror with your non-dominant hand to retract the cheek and use the tray itself to retract the cheek on the other side. Rotate the tray gently into the patient's mouth and then seat it posteriorly distal to the maxillary tuberosities. Retract the upper lip with the mirror to provide visibility. Once the tray is centered over the ridge, push it gently until the impression is seated correctly over the ridge. Once the tray is seated, push the impression material firmly from the center of the palate using your thumb and using your index and middle finger on the ridge to make sure that it's fully seated. And then start border molding the buccal and the labial sulcus by moving the lips and the cheeks in a downward direction. While the patient's mouth is half open, ask them to move their jaw right and left to border mold the distal buccal depth of the sulcus. Instruct the patient with a relaxing voice to breathe slowly through their nose. If the patient has a tendency to gag, the patient's head should be tilted forward so that excess saliva could run out of the patient's mouth instead of down the throat. And you may use a saliva ejector to remove all excess saliva. Keep firm finger pressure on the tray while waiting for the material to completely set. Notice here that it's not completely cooled yet, cooled down yet, as you can see the imprints of your fingernails on the impression while waiting for it to set. So once you can no longer see these marks, then the impression is ready to be removed. Now you can see that the material has cooled down to mouth temperature so it's ready to be removed. Make sure that you allow time for the material to thoroughly cool down to avoid distortion of the material as you remove it. So once you're done, gently break the seal around the impression from the posterior by allowing air under the sulcus, rotate it downwards, and then remove it from the patient's mouth. Wash the impression and dry it and inspect it under a good light source and make sure that all anatomic landmarks are visible so that you can see the full depth of the labial and the buccal sulcus, the distal buccal sulcus, the maxillary tuberosities, the buccal and labial frenum and that the residual ridge is centered in the impression material. Disinfect the impressions by immersing them in a glutaryl dehyde solution, which you can find in special containers in the clinic. Leave them for 5 minutes, rinse them well with running tap water, and send them to the lab to be poured for the construction of the primary cast.